In week three, they're going to apply some of what they learned about plant needs as they learn about space requirements for plants. There's a script that's a part of this lesson. As a teacher, you'll read it and the kids act out being seeds and transplants and they see what it feels like to be too closely planted together. As the kids find out, it's not just space that we're, that's impacted, but the spacing, if it's too close together, impacts the lighting and the water needs for the plant as well. So they learn that and don't crowd me. Related to that same uh, week is an activity called paper towel gardening and this is the junior master gardener version of the concept of square foot gardening and that is a method of planting by which you plant the plants closely together enough to where their needs are met but also it's intensively planted so you don't waste uh, water and the plants are tightly competing for sunlight and so there's less of a problem with weeds in that environment and it maximizes the space that you have available the crops that we're focusing on again are those 12 nutrient dense crops. Some of these are going to be transplanted by seed and some are going to be put in the ground via transplant. And this activity works for both of these. Which by the way, there's two crops that we want to point out. Bok choy on the left and Swiss chard on the right are two new crops for the students as well as probably most of the, the teachers, you guys that are taking part in the curriculum. And those are going to be planted with this method as well. So we use the example of carrot seeds. How closely do we plant those seeds with this, with this uh, planting method? Well, the materials for this lesson are what you see here, paper towels and uh, water-soluble glue and carrot seeds. We use fractions, a little bit of study of fractions with this exercise because we can plant carrot seeds 16 per square foot or per paper towel for this activity. As we see that, 16 plants, so 16 organisms being able to grow and thrive in, in that intensive planted area, the question is why can't we plant all plants that way? Well, again, every plant is different, has different types of spacing requirements and that's a big part of what the kids will learn with this exercise with paper towel gardening. One resource that's a part of your curriculum is the school garden planting chart that you see here. Carrots are a part of that list. You can see it lists two or three weeks before the seeds will begin to emerge. It lists the information about how many seeds you'll plant per paper towel for this activity. Planting depth is a part of the exercise as well as the number of days you can expect to harvest. One bit of information that's left off is a recommended planting date because depending on where you are at in the state, it's going to vary. So that's some information the local county extension office will provide for you as well. In week four, we have a great literature connection. This is a story called A Place to Grow, and it's about this seed that you see here trying to find a place to grow, a place that will have all its needs met. It's a great story, great layout and design. The kids will be engaged, but it's a starting point for this lesson called Home Sweet Home. In this exercise, you'll take the class outside, and the kids will become objective scientists in very objective ways be able to numerically score the criteria for each of these sites that provides for the needs and come with a number for each one of those locations to determine what the best location will be. A lot of times in school settings that location is already predetermined or there may not be a whole lot of flexibility. So in this instance you'll have one of the locations that the kids will evaluate being the location it needs to be and the other two may be some less desirable locations but having kids understand why one location is better than another for meeting the plant needs is what this lesson is all about. Something you'll see in the curriculum, each, uh, uh, many of the lessons have these take it further extensions. And here's an example of one of these in this evaluation page. One of the ways we're able to address more teaks is to be able to do things like substantiate findings. In this example, instead of the kids just giving it a score on accessibility, they're going to come up with a justification for why one site may have a better score than another. And the example here is, if one side is better, it may be because the kids were able to uh, substantiate that by counting the steps from the, from the classroom door to the garden area. One may be 50 steps, one's 150, and of course that one that's 50 steps away would be more accessible and garner a greater score. The second lesson for week four is called Balloon Hot Potato. We're going to learn about the basic food groups. We really want kids to understand the food groups, what they have in them, and what benefits that we get, our minds and bodies get from, from taking in those foods. This lesson starts with a scripted uh, debate type of, a, of, a, of a, a guided lesson and you're going to choose a handful of students to take part in the debate and the rest of the class are going to be judges. And the students initially are going to argue uh, through this, this guided debate format that their food group is the most important and they're going to use the information on these cards to establish the reason why. Ultimately, as this lesson progresses, the kids will come to the conclusion that each of the food groups is important, they each serve vital functions and you have to have a full complete diet to have your needs met. 
This lesson concludes with a game where the kids are passing around balloons or balls that are colored to correspond with the different food groups. And this is just a game to help kids begin to think of examples of foods that come from a particular food group.